Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at derivatives of exponential functions, um, most specifically today dealing with e to the x. We'll deal with uh, 2 to the x or 5 to the x later. And we're going to practice some pre-calculus stuff, first of all, and that's how to solve exponential equations or logarithmic equations. So on a, we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So I'm going to have the natural log of e to the x plus 1 equals the natural log of 7. That's what we're going to prefer to do if we have an x in the exponent. We're going to take the natural log of both sides and we're going to take advantage of the fact that we can bring this exponent down and also that will leave us with the natural log of e. Those cancel. That's just 1. So this is just x plus 1 equals the natural log of 7. And so x is going to equal the natural log of 7 minus 1 and that works out to be since it says three decimal places, it's about 0.946. Now, if you're solving an, a logarithmic equation, you want to look at the base for your log. Ln, log, natural log, has a base of e. So we're going to rewrite it using this property right here. We're going to say that this should be e to the fifth power is equal to 2x minus 3. And so we're going to solve this by adding 3 to both sides and dividing by 2. And you get this answer is about 75.707, if I typed it in on my calculator correctly anyway. All right, so we're going to take a look at some derivatives. And e is a really cool one. The derivative of e to the u is simply e to the u times du dx. So the derivative of e to the 3x squared would be e to the 3x squared then times the derivative of 3x squared, which is 6x. And we typically write it in front. All right, I'm going to rewrite for b. I'm going to rewrite this as sine of e to the x all squared. So we're going to see the chain rule here. So the derivative is going to be 2 times sine of e to the x now times the derivative of the inside. Now the derivative of sine of anything is cosine of that thing times thing prime. So uh, what's the derivative of e to the x? Well it's just e to the x. Something neat that this is one of the only, there's only a few of them, all the other ones that I can think of are constant functions. If you have y equals e to the x, y prime is equal to e to the x. y prime equals y. So the slope is equal to the y coordinate. And I want you to think about natural log's derivative. The derivative for natural log is 1 over x. It's the reciprocal of the x coordinate. Now e to the x is an inverse of natural log and so y prime is equal to the y coordinate. And I want you to remember how inverse functions have um, reciprocal slopes at flippy floppy points. That's interesting. x and y flip and they're reciprocals of each other. That's proof of the inverse relationship derivatives. Alright, so let's uh, review natural log derivatives. The derivative of natural log is u prime over u. So u prime here u would equal 4 plus e to the 3x. So u prime is 3 e to the 3x. The derivative of 4, of course, is 0. The derivative of e to the 3x is e to the 3x times the derivative of 3x, which is 3. So my answer here for y prime is going to equal u prime, 3 e to the 3x. That's a 3 up there. Might not look like it, but that's a 3. So there's u prime over u. That's what your derivative is. All right, let's take a look at this one. Let's take advantage of the fact that if we have a natural log of something that has an exponent on it, that we can rewrite this before we take the derivative as the exponent can come down in front of the natural log. And so we've got x cubed times the natural log of e. And what is the natural log of e? Hey, that's 1. So I'm just trying to find the derivative of x cubed. Well, that's pretty easy. We know what that is. That's 3x squared. So we want to use those properties whenever we can. And here's another chance where I'm, I would not want to do a u substitution here because my u prime would be a quotient rule. Remember with natural log, we can write, rewrite this as the natural log of the top minus the natural log of the bottom. And so I can just do two separate derivatives and I don't have to go through some messy, 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 messy quotient rule. So the derivative of natural log of anything is u prime over u, so that's going to be e to the x over 3 plus e to the x minus, now the derivative of negative e to the x is negative e to the x, which will turn that into a positive, over 3 minus e to the x. 
let's review product rule we do for y prime by the way that was f prime of x up here y prime is the first times the derivative of the second the derivative of e to the negative x is e to the negative x times the derivative of negative x which is just negative one plus the second times the derivative of the first so that would be 2x e to the negative x I'll probably write this as negative x squared e to the negative x plus 2x e to the negative x. A lot of review here, but we're going to keep going with this. We're going to review imp diff to find dy dx. So we're going to go through here and we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of e to the xy is e to the xy, but then times the derivative of the exponent. The derivative of xy, I've got to use the product rule here. So it's x y prime plus y. The derivative of x squared, of course, is 2x. The derivative of y squared is 2y y prime. And the derivative of 10 is 0. So what we want to do now is we want to get our y primes together and take everything else to the other side. So if I distribute this e to the xy, I'm going to get x y prime e to the xy plus y e to the xy. And I'm going to leave, well, I'll go ahead and write this line down. It won't be a big deal. Minus 2x minus 2y y prime equals 0. Let's make sure I did that correctly. I distributed. Yes, I did. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to leave everything that has a y prime on one side and take everything else to the other side. So I've got x y prime e to the xy minus 2y y prime. Those terms are going to stay on this side because they've got a y prime involved. We'll take everything else to the other side. Negative 2x minus y e to the xy. So the last thing we'll do here is we're going to factor out a y prime and divide through. So I'm running out of room, but I think we've got it here. y prime equals negative 2x minus y e to the xy divided by x e to the xy minus 2y. That I think is correct. All right, last one we're going to review again, points of inflection and some relative extrema. In order to do relative extrema, I need to take a look at critical points. I'm going to set f prime equal to zero. Points of inflection, I need f double prime equal to zero and see if it changes sign there. So let's get after it. The first thing I need to do is get f prime. f prime is going to equal x e to the x, it's product rule, first times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first. And let's go ahead and get that in factored form. So that's e to the x times x plus 1. That's f prime. Now what's f double prime? Well, we're just going to have to do this again. So f double prime is going to be x e to the x. We've got to use product rule. Plus e to the x. And then plus e to the x. These first two terms are the product rule on x e to the x. And of course, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. So that's going to be, that's 2 e to the x's. And so in factored form, this would be e to the x times x plus 2. Because they were, I just combined those terms. All right, so we'll do our little number line for f prime, and we're going to do a little number line for f double prime. Critical point for f prime is only at negative 1. e to the x never equals 0, so the only critical point we're going to have there is at negative 1. The only critical point for f double prime is negative 2. You can never make this first factor equal to 0. So I've got f double prime, and I've got f prime, and here's f. So let's plug in some numbers into the factored form. To the left of negative 1, I'm plug in negative 2. e to the negative 2 is positive. It's a small number, but it's still positive. And negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, so I have a positive times a negative. So that's negative, which means that f is decreasing. Now if I plug in 0, I get e to the 0, which is 1, times 1. That's a positive number, which means that f is increasing. We have found a relative minimum. f is decreasing from the left and then increasing to the right of negative 1. So I know I'm going to put a negative 1 over here on my graph. Now f double prime, if we plug in like negative 3, I'm going to get a negative value, which means that f is concave down. And then if I plug in negative 1 to the right, I get a positive number, which means that f is concave up. So we're going to have a point of inflection at negative 2 because f double prime changed sign. So I'm concave down and decreasing until right there. And it's hard to, hard to do with my 
little pin there. And then I've got to change the concave up, create a minimum, and then increasing. That wasn't the best picture in the world, but you can look on your graphing calculator and see how that looks. Anyway, so that's it for now, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.